Yeah. I would like to thank uh, uh, Yeneng and Ichun for inviting me to this wonderful conference in Singapore. Uh, uh, these days, actually, uh, weather is actually uh, cooler in Singapore than in Seoul. <laughs> Seoul is terribly hot. <laughs> So this is joint work with uh, Young Kuche at Columbia, and Seji Kim, my colleague at SNU, and Olivia Tercia from uh, PSE, uh, who is sitting here. Uh, you may ask questions to him as well as to me. And so in many decision-making contexts in economics, people seem to care about the prestige associated with the choice they are making. Uh, for instance, uh, students care about the college rankings uh, published in U.S. News and World Report. And also, they would like to go to more prestigious majors, uh, 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 the majors that are believed to admit uh, smarter students, uh, more intelligent students. And also, the students would like to go to top five graduate schools for, for their PhD. And they, they like to go to like top five universities in the rookie job market, and also many economists like to publish their papers in our, our top five journals. And <clears throat> and, and the prestige we are looking at uh, is related to college admission problem. So in college admission problem, the prestige of a program is. Uh, it reflects the selectivity of the program, uh, that is, how difficult it is to get into a certain program uh, on top of the quality of the program itself. Uh, and the basic problem is that there is, we, we view this one as an asymmetric information problem. The, uh, usually, people have more information about themselves, uh, their ability or their productivity than others do. And, uh, and then they would like to use the fact that they enter into this kind of prestigious programs as a signal about their underlying hidden ability or uh, their hidden merit by, uh, by being mixed up with the, uh, smart students or intelligent guys in the same program. And there are actually some evidences for this kind of prestige concern. And US News and World Ranking Report, uh, World Report Rankings uh, is, is, uh, is actually affecting st a student's choice of the colleges. Uh, and this is true even after uh, the, quality, uh, the college, quality of the college is controlled for. So there is something else. Uh, there is something other than the uh, quality of the college that students care about when they make uh, what college to apply to or attend. And also Bentley et al. Uh, used data from a natural experiment in, uh, in Colombia, country of Colombia, to show that uh, the college reputation has a positive impact on, on wages. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the job market. And there are also some Korean studies that shows that employers care about uh, uh, the uh, relative ranking of the colleges attended by the, uh, the, the job candidates they are recruiting, uh, and also the, the, the candidates they, are, they consider for promotion. And, and it is also reported that uh, many students uh, in Korea actually uh, pick their majors based on the selectivity of the programs rather than their own interest or aptitude about the program. And, and in the end, they end up regretting their choice, uh, which actually kind of indicates that they picked the wrong major uh, for, for in terms of their, their preference or their aptitude. And in this paper, uh, we introduced a simple model to analyze this kind of phenomenon in college admission problem. And we view uh, this kind of prestige concern as an equilibrium phenomenon, uh, which means that the, uh, the prestige of a certain program arises endogenously. Uh, and it depends on what students are choosing what majors. Because certain major admits uh, certain students, uh, smart students are choosing certain major more than some other major. So the prestige of the former major is going to go up so that uh, students would like to go to that program uh, more and more. 
And this kind of has a reinforcing effect. So I'm going to explain uh, this effect later uh, in the analysis of the model. And then uh, based on this uh, uh, equilibrium uh, model and the equilibrium, we are going to do some competitive statics uh, to study how this prestige effect uh, interacts with the primitives of the model. And one primitive of the model is, uh, is stratification of the program, which is the quality difference between the program. And uh, this quality difference between the program is kind of a, a one initial factor that uh, creates uh, this prestige concern or this uh, different prestige among different programs. But uh, when this uh, uh, stratification of the program interacts with this uh, prestige concern, uh, it has kind of reinforcing effect. And then uh, we also uh, consider this coarseness of the selection criteria. So how coarse or how refined to make this selection criteria or student scores. And this also has an uh, impact on the, uh, this prestige effect. And then uh, we uh, introduce different groups of students uh, who have different test skills or different test preparation technologies and, and then see how this kind of uh, heterogeneity among students uh, can actually uh, favor or disfavor a certain group of students, uh, students who have a better technologies or poor, poorer technologies, um, how they are affected by uh, this prestige concern. And then um, or we draw some welfare and policy implications from this competitive statics analysis. And they are also related to the market design uh, uh, perspective of our paper. And then we provide some empirical evidence for the prestige effect using the survey data from uh, my university, Seoul National University. Uh, is there any question? Uh, so, he so here is the here is the basic model. So we have a unit mass of student continuum of students competing for two college programs A and B, and each program has a, a half mass of seats. And here the program can refer to uh, uh, departments or majors in countries like uh, Korea, Japan, Australia, because in these countries, uh, students are admitted into departments or majors. But in other countries like uh, US and also Korea and France, students are admitted into college because they follow this college of liberal studies uh, system. Uh, but you can interpret our model in either, either way. And each student has types uh, represented by three elements, epsilon A, epsilon B, and V. The epsilon J is idiosyncratic aptitude of preference for each program J, and one for progr uh, each program. And this V uh, is a student score. Students are supposed to take some exam uh, to get into college, or it can be nationwide exam or something like that. So that this exam score is common across all the colleges. All colleges look at this score uh, in order to make admission decision on students. And we assume that this uh, VUI is an unbiased estimator of the student's true ability theta. So that this data is kind of mean preserving spread of this uh, VUI, right? And, and this score is only observable for the admission purpose. The, the colleges who make this admission decision can observe this signal, but it is not observable to the outside people. And, and, and also this data is never observable. The only students can observe this data. Uh, neither college nor the outside people can observe this underlying ability of students. That's our assumption. And uh, we introduced one notation, uh, expectation of VJ, which is uh, average score of students enrolling in program J. Right? And because we made this unbiasedness assumption, uh, this uh, average score of students in J is equal to the average ability of students in J, right? program J. And uh, therefore, this expectation of VJ, EVJ, is inferred ability of any students enrolling in program J. Right? And, and outside people can infer that uh, students who, any students who is attending this program J has an average ability 
uh, equal to the, this one, right? Average exam score. And then the student utility, uh, utility of students with this uh, type profile is given as uh, summation of uh, Q, uh, epsilon j, and this term. And what is this Q? This is uh, program quality, uh, quality of the program j, which is common to all students. And this quality is enjoyed by, commonly enjoyed by all students, irrespective of their types. And uh, we assume that uh, QA is greater than QB, and difference between QA and QB is equal to delta. Right? And this delta parameterizes this uh, quality gap between two programs or the stratification or polarization of two programs. Right? So this is kind of initial driving force for the uh, different prestiges in different programs. But this has a kind of reinforcing effect uh, uh, with uh, student prestige concern. And then uh, epsilon j is idiosyncratic preference, uh, which, can, which is different uh, across different students. And this last term measures this uh, prestige utility. So uh, this tau uh, uh, parameterizes the magnitude of the prestige effect. And this tau is multiplied by this difference. So remember that this EVJ is the average ability, is equal to the average ability of students enrolling in program J. This is the overall average ability. So the difference between these two terms is kind of measures the uh, program J's prestige, right? And one thing to note is that neither this large delta nor this tau has direct effect on the utilitarian welfare because total amount of quality is just fixed, right? And also total amount of prestige is also fixed because if you sum them up, if you uh, sum of uh, uh, the prestige program A and prestige program B, and it just becomes equal to the average exam score, right? So if uh, prestige of one program goes up and the prestige of the other program goes down, which is kind of natural. So that uh, if you just sum up uh, the, these utilities across all the students, this term just washes out. So it will be canceled out, right? So what is important for the allocation is to actually to have a good match between uh, students, uh, the, the program students enroll in and their idiosyncratic utility, right? So it is better to assign some students with higher epsilon A to program A rather than program B and something like that. And then this is the timeline of the model. So first, a student realized the exam score uh, that is drawn from this CDF. And then they apply to both programs. This, is, uh, this captures this system of regular admission. And in, in the early admission, this assumption can be changed, right? And then programs admit students based on the, their, common, uh, their, uh, their score. Uh, this score applies to both colleges, right? And uh, students who are admitted by both programs pick the program, uh, whatever program they like, they like better. Uh, give them higher utility, uh, the utility expressed in the pre uh, previous slide. And then here is the equilibrium analysis. Is there any question about the model? Yeah, the, the, the prestige effect uh, term, this last term kind of uh, reduced form for uh, the capturing this future wage associated with the, uh, the prestige of the program you graduated from and something like that. So this is like a reduced form. But you can be more explicit about introducing this kind of labor market outcome. But we are kind of avoiding it here. So in your model, the total capacity is the same as the total number of students. Right. Right, then it's going to amount to uh, having like three programs, two academic programs and null program. And then model is going to be a bit more complicated in, the, in that case. And 
uh, we are currently actually uh, working on this kind of extension of the model and, or continuum colleges. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah, they are independent, right, yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, for the equilibrium analysis, we focus on this variable, uh, small delta, which is the uh, prestige gap between the two programs. And uh, for s uh, we, let's assume that this delta is weakly positive, so that the program A offers a weakly higher prestige than program B. And we call that program A also offers the higher quality, <coughs> weakly higher quality than program B does, right? And then uh, we define this uh, fixed point mapping phi from a uh, given uh, prestige gap delta, small delta to another prestige gap uh, delta tilde uh, in this way. So fix any delta, uh, weakly uh, uh, positive delta, and then uh, you can calculate this uh, cutoff score for program A uh, denoted VA hat, and cutoff score for program B is zero. This program B offers lower utility in terms of both quality and the prestige, right? So, so it has to have a, a lower cutoff, but because uh, the number of students is equal to the seat of the uh, number of seats in colleges, so this threshold cutoff score for uh, worst program has to be zero. And we focus on this cutoff score for program A, which is denoted as VA hat. And we calculate this cutoff such that uh, each program fills its seats. And then uh, each individual student with this type chooses program A if and only if he has a high enough score to clear this cutoff and also uh, uh, gets a higher utility from attending program A than attending program B. And if you simplify this inequality, then you have uh, this term, difference of uh, idiosyncratic utilities from two programs, which is from now on denoted as alpha. If this alpha is greater than this minus uh, capital delta plus tau small delta, then this guy uh, uh, chooses to attend uh, uh, Program A. So, question. Uh, so this uh, delta being non-negative uh, is not uh, assumption. Is that the right. Yeah. You can have uh, an equilibrium where this delta is actually negative, where program B has a higher prestige than program A, even though program B offers lower quality than program A. That's true, the right? Quality yeah. Level yeah. Is better, yeah. But the is better. Yeah. We have. We can have multiple equilibrium here. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you, you don't, you have yeah. Yeah. We are just focusing on this equilibrium. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, you can sort out uh, all the students into program A and program B, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on this choice, right? And then you can recalculate the uh, the prestige of the, each program. Uh, by looking at the uh, proportion of students or proportion of student types uh, choosing each program. So we'll have a, a new prestige gap, uh, delta tilde. And you can show that this is a self-map. And also this map is non-decreasing. And therefore, by Tarski fixed point theorem, this mapping admits a fixed point delta star. And uh, you can have multiple uh, fixed points, so th th as you said. And let me uh, uh, give you a, uh, a brief argument for the monotonicity of this mapping phi. So because this is going to be useful for the competitive statics analysis I'm going to do later. And this space is the, has alpha on the x-axis and V on the y-axis. And this student uh, with uh, alpha equal to zero is indifferent between uh, program A and program B only in terms of the in, uh, idiosyncratic preferences, right? And then uh, fixed delta, and program A has a higher prestige, right? So that uh, the student who, who is indifferent between program A and program B is the student with this alpha, right? Minus large delta plus uh, tau times small delta. 
And all the students uh, to the right of this point uh, prefers program A. All the students to the left of this point uh, prefers program B. But the size of this student exceeds the number of seats for program A, so that the program A becomes more competitive because it only has a uh, one half number of seats. So the cutoff score for program A has to go up, right? And then. Uh, if you recalculate the uh, prestige of program A and B, now uh, prestige of program A is going to go higher. Uh, you, you, uh, no, no, sorry about this. So you can recalculate the prestige of program A and B given this uh, proportion of uh, students who choose each program, right? And now you increase the prestige of program A relative to program B to delta prime, small delta prime. And now more students actually prefer program A to program B in terms of their idiosyncratic preference. And because of that, the cutoff for program A has to go up uh, even further. But uh, after this change, if you look at the, the students, the, the program A is getting and the, stud uh, the students program A is losing, and, and these guys are now choosing program A, and they have higher score than these guys, right? And still the program A has the same number of seats, right? So that the pro program A's pre uh, average score is going up, which means that program B's uh, average score is going down, then prestige gap is going to become greater, right? So that, uh, so which means actually that this uh, fixed point is actually uh, is monotonic, right? And if you take a look at these guys, and intrinsic preference of these guys tell them to go to program A, right? But they actually sacrifice their intrinsic preference in order to enjoy better prestige utility by attending program A, right? And these guys would like to attend program A in terms of the intrinsic preference, but they cannot actually get into program A because now program A becomes too competitive. So their score is not high enough to, to clear the uh, cutoff for program A. So you can anticipate some kind of welfare loss, right, from looking at, just looking at this graph. And this uh, mapping phi looks like this. So this is a, a delta you put uh, uh, into this function phi as an input. And this is 45 degree line. And if you find any intersection between this phi and 45 degree line, it's going to give us the equilibrium prestige gap. So in this case, where this tau is not that big, uh, you only have one equilibrium where there is no prestige gap between two programs, right? Or oh, here I'm making, I'm making assume that I'm making an assumption that two programs offer the same quality. So this capital delta is equal to zero. But if you increase this magnitude of prestige utility above some threshold tau hat, like to tau prime, and then this uh, phi curve uh, shifts up, so now you have two intersections. And, but uh, only this point is stable point, so as you can see. And this is unstable, right? So even though two programs offer the same quality to all students, and this prestige concern actually makes this program A better. And, and the equilibrium in, in which program A has a higher prestige is actually is the only stable equilibrium, right? So as you have said, you can have another equilibrium here, down here, where the program B has a higher uh, prestige than program A, which is also a stable equilibrium. And then some competitive statics here. So suppose that uh, this magnitude of prestige utility and the, uh, uh, this quality gap between two programs rises, to, rises from tau de capital delta to tau prime capital delta prime. Uh, uh, in other words, the prestige matters more and the uh, programs are more stratified. And in, the, in that case, if you look at the extreme equilibrium, uh, where this delta is the largest or smallest, 
And uh, you can see that the prestige, equilibrium prestige gap uh, rises. And also, uh, program A becomes more selective, which means that the cutoff score for program A goes up, and utilitarian welfare falls, actually. So as I have told you, uh, given, uh, even in the symmetric case, uh, the equilibrium where there is no prestige gap between two programs is stable if and only if this magnitude of the uh, prestige gap, uh, prestige utility is, is not that uh, big. There are some winners and losers. It's not part of the problem, yeah. If I do care about this prestige, what happens on market percent? Then that part of the utility is not modeling good. Excuse me? That part of the utility is not modeling Right, right. That, that is not actually entered into the model, yeah. yeah. So we only actually care about the students' aggregate utility here. Uh, so intuition is pretty simple. Uh, so this, uh, let's take a look at this uh, graph again. So this is phi, this is delta. So when uh, the quality gap, there is no quality gap, you have this equilibrium, this is stable equilibrium. And if you increase this capital delta to some positive number like one eighth, then it, this curve shifts off, right? But uh, at the beginning, uh, because of the higher quality of the program A, uh, more uh, students apply to program A. That actually goes up. That makes the, the cutoff score for program uh, go up. Uh, that will actually boost up the prestige for program A. This is the first effect. But once uh, this, this is the kind of direct effect, but there is also indirect effect. Once this prestige gap uh, goes up, in favor of program A, and then it will attract more students, even more students, right? So program A's cutoff is going to go up even further, right? So that it now attracts uh, uh, smarter students, more intelligent students, and then that will actually boost up the prestige for program A even further, and, and so on. So this is indirect effect. So in the end, you are going to end up in uh, some new uh, stable equilibrium here. So this kind of reinforcing effect between uh, the uh, uh, quality gap and prestige gap actually is, is working here. Sorry for sticking to my previous question yeah, again. Okay. But uh, if delta is negative, this uh, quality gap, prestige gap cancel out. That's true, yeah. Um, that's a good question, yeah. yeah. Anything you, you want to add? <laughs> yeah. And the students can apply to both one? They can apply to both programs. Both programs? Yeah, yeah. Oh. This is regular admission. This is not the only admission. Right. And the welfare decrease. So suppose that uh, uh, this, uh, let's continue on this competitive statics. So by assuming that this, a large delta and this magnitude tau uh, goes up, and then uh, program A's cutoff goes up from VA hat to VA hat prime, and this indifferent type uh, moves to the left. So these guys are now uh, uh, moving from uh, program B to program A. These guys are moving from program A to program B, right? So, um, and if you compare these two guys, all these guys have actually more, uh, more intense utility toward program A than program B. So there is certainly a loss of idiosyncratic utilities by this movement, right? But these guys will now enjoy higher prestige utility, but as I told you, the prestige utility change will just wash out, right? Because there is a fixed amount of prestige utility. So that doesn't matter for the aggregate utility. So only this, uh, this kind of mismatch between uh, students and the program is going to decrease the welfare. 
Uh, and then we do uh, this another competitive aesthetics with respect to the signal accuracy. So we ask what will happen if we make signal more precise uh, in the sense that uh, for now we are uh, uh, considering one signal uh, uh, information structure uh, denoted V. But you can think about another signal structure, W, which is also correlated with the underlying ability. Uh, but you assume, we assume that this V, this V is actually conditional expectation of theta given V, right? So this is random variable. This is another random variable of the same kind. But if you assume that this V is a mean preserving spread of this W, there is a sense in which that this, uh, this signal V is more uh, informative than uh, signal uh, W, right? So this is actually the uh, information pre precision criterion introduced by the Ganuza and Penalba in their econometrical paper. And this integral precision criterion is actually general enough to accommodate both Lehman precision and Black L precision. Then, and the result is that as you make the signal uh, uh, more integral precise, prestige gap becomes greater. So the, the prestige gap uh, widens between the proof two programs, and that makes utilitarian welfare fall and at extreme equilibrium. So which is actually uh, intuitive, right? If the uh, signal or the exam score becomes more precise, then the fact that you enter into a program with higher exam uh, cutoff score actually tells a, lot, tells a lot about your underlying ability so that you can get a higher actually uh, prestige utility uh, under this more precise uh, uh, regime uh, for the signal precision. And this one is actually related to some policy debate in Korea. Uh, in, in Korea, there was debate about how uh, difficult to make the exam, nationwide exam, in the, in, in the college entrance exam. So, or how, how to partition the exam score. So we don't actually report the, the raw score. We actually partition uh, uh, students' exam score into some intervals. And then the question is how to make this interval refined, right? So if you make it uh, more refined, then you are going to have a more precise information. And also there was debate on whether to use some other measures than the exam score for admission or possibly some non-academic measure. So we have a related result here. So, so far, uh, we assume that only this exam score who is being used to screen students, right, for college admission. But we can, you can take an alternative college admission system under which uh, the colleges look at uh, some linear combination of uh, this V and alpha. So we assume that there is uh, somehow some way to measure student in, in intrinsic uh, uh, utility or aptitude for program. And if you can measure that one, you can base your admission decision on uh, this information, uh, for and alpha, or linear combination of them. And this is something called holistic admission. And you can show that under this holistic admission, uh, um, uh, uh, this prestige gap actually goes down. And then the utilitarian welfare goes up. And this one has, uh, has the same effect as reducing the signal precision. Because now you base your admission uh, something other than the, just this exam score, which is correlated with the, uh, the underlying ability. But this alpha is not correlated with the uh, underlying ability, right? Um, so another comparative statics here. So here we uh, uh, partition students into two groups, a uh, group of privileged students and the group of underprivileged students. And um, they are exactly the same in terms of the idiosyncratic utility, but they draw their scores from a uh, different uh, distribution. So these guys, the privileged students, have a higher socioeconomic status 
So they have some access to better exam preparation technology so that uh, they draw their scores from distribution P and the other group draw their scores from uh, distribution uh, U. And we assume that this P likelihood ratio dominate this distribution U. Right? And then the two match to map this one to the, to the previous Bayesian model, uh, if you assume that there is a mass of privileged student MP and MU uh, mass of underprivileged students, if you just uh, weighted average of, take a weighted average of uh, these two distributions using MP and MU, and you get this FV. And then the result is this. Suppose that uh, you increase the magnitude of uh, uh, prestige utility and uh, this uh, quality gap between two programs, then an extreme equilibrium, um, you can show that underprivileged students are getting worse off uh, in two senses, in a couple of senses. Their share of the uh, elite program actually falls. And also their utilitarian welfare also falls. So the last comparative statics I'm going to show you is the comparison between two uh, admission systems. So one called college-based admission, the other called uh, department-based admission. So here we extend the basic model by assuming introducing two colleges and two programs, college one and two, and two majors A and B. So each college has a uh, half mass of seats as before. And here we have four departments, 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, right? And we assume that, uh, so this QKJ is the quality of department KJ. So college K program J. And then uh, we assume that uh, this delta KQ, which is difference between QKA and QKB, uh, is positive. So that program A or major A offers higher quality, right? And also this uh, delta JQ, which is which denotes Q1j minus Q2j uh, is positive. So when it's positive, which means that the uh, college one is, is, is better than college two, whatever program it is, right? Whatever major it is. And then uh, there is uh, idiosyncratic preferences for majors, but we don't have any idiosyncratic preferences for colleges. So this is a kind of simplifying assumption. But this one, it makes sense when uh, preference heterogeneity is smaller across colleges than across majors. I think this is the case uh, in a lot of uh, realistic situations. Then, um, so let me explain how the admission goes on uh, in each regime. Each regime. In the college-based admission, uh, students first enroll in college and then they freely choose their majors as they advance to the sophomore or the junior, second year or third year. So that this means that there is no capacity constraint for each individual department, right? So there is only capacity constraint for the individual college. And in de department-based admission, students enroll in each individual department. So that we need to uh, introduce uh, capacity for each department KJ, which is given exogenously as kappa KJ, right? And let's take a first look at the equilibrium under the CBA. Here, uh, this college one is like elite college, right? So the, which has a higher cutoff, V1 head. And all the students whose score is above this V1 head is going to uh, college one, and other students are going to college two. And once they get into college one or college two, their uh, major decision is just based on the, the quality difference between two programs, right? So that uh, this guy is just in, because they all actually enjoy the same reputation or same prestige um, uh, as other students in the same college, right? So it doesn't actually matter for your reputation or your prestige uh, which major you actually pick after entering a certain college, right? So that, um, so all these students, uh, this guy is indifferent between program A and B, and, and this number is equal to minus delta 1Q. There is no actually tau times small delta term here, right? So there is no prestige concern. 
as you make this uh, major choice. So that these students will uh, major in program A, these students will major in program B, and, and, and it's similarly for pro, uh, college two, right? So here there is no within college distortion uh, in the major choice, but there is actually some across college distortion here. Because uh, if you take a look at this student and this student, this guy has a higher intensity for program A. But because this guy, than this guy, but, but this, because this guy has chosen pro, uh, college two, this guy ended up in program B. But if you, this, if you, this, if you swap these two guys, yeah, then utilitarian welfare will go up, right? Because this uh, prestige utility will just wash out, as I've said earlier. And then this is uh, one picture, uh, picture for one equilibrium under department-based admission, which is much more complicated. So each program has, uh, has its own cutoff score. So here, a program 1A is the elitist program, so it has the highest score, cutoff score. And then program 1B, program 2A, and program 2B. So remember that A program offers higher quality than program B, and also college one offers higher quality than college two, right? So it's very hierarchical. So in, in, under this regime, you can find uh, across college distortion, but also you can also find this, uh, within college distortion. For instance, if you take a look at these guys, the highlighted guys, and it's better actually, uh, uh, to send them to program B. And it's better to send these guys to program A, even though they just remain in the same college, right? And the same for these guys, right? And, but you have uh, all sorts of equilibria, actually, depending on the uh, quota for department 1A and quota for department 2A. So you have a bunch of equilibrium. Uh, equilibrium is identified by the order of the cutoff scores. So here, here uh, program 1A has the highest cutoff, program 2A, 1B, 2B. So this is the same situation as you have the graph you have seen in the previous slide, but you have other equilibria here. But if you calculate utilitarian welfare in all these equilibrium, under all these specification of the quota for different uh, departments, then the instance where the department-based admission offers higher utilitarian welfare is very rare, actually. It's only this place. So in all, the, in all other cases, the college-based admission is, is always better. So it's, it's because of this uh, no within college distortion under this college-based admission, but you, you, all, but you, you have uh, this uh, within college distortion uh, um, under this department-based admission because these departments are actually very uh, hierarchical in, in, in this uh, latter regime. And, and this proposition actually gives us some general result. Um, uh, it's a result that generalizes the, is the observation uh, we made in the previous example. So if the uh, college uh, one program A has a smaller uh, capacity than the same uh, major in college two, then uh, college-based admission is always better in terms of utilitarian welfare than in any equilibrium of the department-based admission. Uh, remember that you could have uh, many multiple equilibria under this department-based admission, but in any uh, equilibrium of department-based admission, so um, the, the utilitarian welfare is so uh, lower than the unique equilibrium of the college-based admission. And you have another condition that uh, gives you the same ranking between the two programs. Uh, uh, the last part is the, uh, some empirical evidence uh, uh, using data from the SNU survey. I don't have enough time to go over all these uh, <coughs> admission programs, different admission programs in SNU, but what I would like to show you is this table. So we have two actually programs uh, in which students can major in social sciences. Actually there are three, but I only present two here. So this is kind of the US type of the college admission. 
the College of Liberal Studies. So they came into this college, the College of Liberal Studies, and they can choose any social science as well as other majors. But you can also enter this social science college and then choose any major within this social science. Right? But somehow, uh, this social science program is organized such that students don't care about the prestige of their major. Oh, sorry. Uh, they, they care about, they care about the, the prestige of the major they have chosen if, if they enter into this social science program, right? And, uh, but if you go into this liberal studies program, you don't care about this, this, this uh, prestige of the major you, you choose. And you can expect that uh, this uh, student's major choice pattern is going to be quite different across these two programs, which is actually the case. So if you take a look, if you focus on the number of students who major in economics out of all social sciences, so here we restrict our attention to students who chose social science as their major. And if you take a look at this liberal studies program, only 46% uh, of students major in economics. Economics is actually, actually is considered as an elite program in SNU, so in, in Korean society. And, but if you take a look at the social science program where this prestige is important, and much higher percentage of students is choosing economics, 80%. And this is the case uh, uh, in all years. And this program has been abolished actually after this 2016. It, it, these two programs have coexisted only for like three or four years. So I, I just give, I'm giving you uh, these numbers for these three years. So, and also we kind of surveyed uh, students from these different programs and found that uh, guys who enter this social science program where the prestige matters and choose economics are very unhappy about their choice. <laughs> So, which means that the, they have chosen economics for some other reasons than their preference or aptitude, which we believe to be uh, prestige. <laughs> and, and also, their actually major GPA was pretty low. The students who actually enter into social science and have chosen uh, economics as a major, uh, their uh, GPA for non-economics was about the same as other students which means that they are as intelligent as to those guys, but their GPA for economics major was pretty low, significantly lower than other students, uh, or students who enter economics uh, through uh, other routes. Yeah. So, this is it. Yeah. Any question? Thank you. Thank you.